Two things in this video, showing you the first 30 shots at 50 yards after cleaning my Lilja barrel down to the bare metal, and then the next 30 shots at 100 yards to look at the correlation between extreme spread and accuracy. Trick shots with OK Rifleman. See that ear that sticks out a little bit? It's about the same size as a 22 caliber bullet. I'm going to attempt at 100 yards to shoot it off. Nailed it. That really was a shot at 100 yards, but it's not where I was aiming. Just a chance you take when you put your stupid face on a target. So I've been shooting this Lilja barrel on my 22 for a little over six months, and I noticed it had a pretty good carbon ring. And I started to clean it according to Lilja's instructions, and finally just said screw it, and I cleaned it down to the bare metal. Up to this point, I'd shot SK and Lapua ammo exclusively, and I was worried about getting that lube cleaned out, but I also knew this barrel did shoot really well right out of the box. Now what I'm going to do is shoot six five-shot groups. These will be the first 30 shots fired from a clean barrel, and I'll be using SK rifle match from a lot that I've had really good luck with. Well, it looks like I just need to clean my gun every five shots and I'll never lose another match. I wasn't that worried about cleaning it down to the bare metal, but I have to admit I'm pretty surprised that the first five shots were so good. Now, I have seen a little bit better accuracy from this rifle, but the wind was blowing fast enough from the left to the right that I'm just not worried about it. I feel like the accuracy is right back to where it was. Here's a look at the combined 30 shots. Uh, it's not the best that I've ever done, but it's right there pretty close. Well, there on the center right, I have a one inch square, and I'm going to use that just kind of as a cider target, make sure that my zero is where I think it is, and then I'll move on to the other targets. Okay, so what I've done now is made one inch squares around the centers of these targets. That's what I'm trying to hit. In our competition, one of the stages at 100 yards is to shoot a one inch square. And so I'm trying to uh, find an ammunition that can do that. So I shot a total of 29 shots. I'm excluding the cold bore, which is right there. And then, so that leaves me with 28 shots left. Four of those shots went high of the one inch square. Four of the, those shots went low of the one inch square. And then I had this one over here that went a little bit to the right. And so I noticed that the four that went high were my four fastest shots. And the four that went low were my four slowest shots. And they even went in order. The highest shot was the fastest shot. The second highest shot was the second fastest. The third highest was the third fastest. And the fourth highest 
was the fourth fastest. And then this one that blew my ear off, it was by far the slowest shot. So I thought that was very interesting. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm awesome and my rifle is awesome, but SK Rifle Match is not awesome enough. Okay, so let's start there on the left. I have it listed as 29 shots, but it's really 28 because I excluded the first shot as the cold bore. This rifle, I just know I can't trust the cold bore shot. But that extreme spread and standard deviation is just okay. And there in the middle, that's the 19 shots that hit within the 1 inch square. And so now the extreme spreads down to 22.9 and standard deviation is 6.2. And there on the right are the 13 shots that were closest to center. And now we have a 16.8 for extreme spread and standard deviation of 4.9. At 50 yards, I never could see a a correlation between accuracy and extreme spread and standard deviation. But once I moved out to 100 yards, that really does seem to be the deciding factor. So how do you get lower extreme spread and standard deviation? You pay for it. This is what I've tested personally, and this is at least 20 rounds. On the SK rifle match, I've tested hundreds of them, and these are the best numbers that I've found. So well, here's a look again at the 19 that hit the 1 inch square. I had an extreme spread of 22.9 and standard deviation of 6.2. So those more expensive ammos probably are what I'm lacking. So you pay a little bit more money and get a little bit better numbers, but all I need is a little bit. Those two shots would have, all I have to do is break the 1 inch line to score. And uh, I was awfully close on those. Maybe I'm reading into this too much and it's just a coincidence but it really seems like if I'm going to shoot at these farther distances I'm going to have to spend a little bit more money on ammunition. Well I kind of made this with all of the velocities that hit in that specific row. So in the top row you can see there were three shots and then if you go down through the second row you can see that there were two shots and it's sort of a bell curve here you could see that the majority of the shots hit there in the center rows but anyway I thought this was kind of an interesting look at each shot and where they hit. Though I do have a brick of Midas Plus and so I guess I will take it out and do the same thing and hope that I get the results I think I'm going to.